Good morning, comic collectors. This is David, and I am back with the mystery box opening. If you saw my last video, I said I showed you um, footage when I was at Cartersville Comic Con, and I picked up two mystery boxes, and I'm going to open them today and see what I got. Um, and in case you missed the clip, here's a little reminder. Okay, comic collectors, look what I just stumbled across. You know how much I love my mystery boxes. Uh, $15 each, or two for 20 More than 20 items in each box. So, I will be going home with a couple of these boxes. He has a bunch. The uh, gentleman that you saw there, I talked to for several minutes um, off camera. And uh, he says... He runs the Atlanta Comic Convention. Um, and this was the card that he had sitting on the table. So for those of you in the Atlanta area, Sunday, November 12th, 2023, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the uh, Atlanta Marriott Century Center Hotel. Um, it's only, I think he said tickets were only $5, admission $5.00. And he says he sells these boxes there every year and does uh, good business with them. So let's see what we have. And a little bit of issues there. Okay, so our two boxes, all ages and R rated. Let's slide that over and get this all ages out of the way first. Okay, looks like something other than a comic. Oh, looks like a coffee mug. I do love my coffee. <laughs> Alright, well, there you go. There's a Protonics coffee mug. There's a big flyer for the Atlanta Comic Convention. And there is a whole bunch of stuff in here. Oh my goodness. Okay, so obviously a Magic a Gathering card. I have not stayed um, up to date on what my different Magic Gathering cards are. The new version, so I have no idea. So I tell you what I'm going to do. Let me gather up all these cards. That is a whole lot of stuff. Alright, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. Alright, folks. Huntsville Comic Convention, November 3rd through 4th. Another advertisement there. So if anybody's in the Huntsville area, there you go. Um, $10. Parking only $10 per car load. Hold on. All right. Um, let's see what else we've got. Let's get all these cards gathered up. All right. I'm going to just close that top to make life a little easier for me. Maybe. So we have a He-Man's. Excuse me. He-Man's. He-Man, Master of the Universe, um, like the trading card. I'm going to set these. Over the side, I got another one uh, with the Sorceress. Help me out, folks. Just a couple baseball cards. These really are just a little grab bag of anything. And that's what the sign said. Alright, if any of you Magic the Gathering collectors see anything great, let me know. I don't even know what this is. What is this? Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. 
uh, any Yu-Gi-Oh collectors out there. Turn to our outfield. All right, so any of you Yu-Gi-Oh collectors out there? All right. Um, there you go. So I got three He-Man Master of the Universe cards. I got, let's see if you guys can see it. One, two, three, four, five. Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I don't collect baseball cards, even though I do have a few um, in the collectibles pile. That's Jim Dwyer. That's Dave Rigetti. That's John Ullard. And Kenny Maldonado. Maldonado. So, the only name I recognize is Jim Dwyer. So, no idea if those are worth anything. Probably not. Alright, so, we have one. If anybody recognizes these that are worth anything, let me know. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, let's set those cards to the side. Let's dig back into the box. So we've got. Oh, sounds like it's rattling around in there. Yep, spin around. Oh, it's broken. I do why it's rattling around in there. But we got Rise of the Silver Surfer. Um, probably some of the best scenes in this Fantastic Four compared to some of the others. Let me set that over there. Oh. So this was the 2000 Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, this was the 2000 Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, shoot. Hey guys, look, we missed a whole nother pile of cards. Guess I should have been a little bit more observant. Oh, well, let me set those down. So what do we got? We got a couple more. Or another Masters of the Universe card. Oh, we got a couple Pokemon cards here. Energy. I'm betting those are common like lands in um, the Magic the Gathering. So there we go, three more Magic the Gathering. So that makes 13 of those. Uh, that's, okay, that's a 45 RPM extended play 1979. It says $7 right there. It's the little drummer boy, four favorite Christmas songs. Um, I do have a record player that I bought uh, several years ago, um, and I do have a very small record collection, so uh, actually that's kind of cool, um, especially with Christmas coming up. I'll add it. All right, um, look what we have here. Five, absorbed, five assorted, number zero or number one, variance enhanced. Signed comics, $25. Very cool. Okay, folks, let's uh, open this up. Tape, tape, tape. Um, folks, if you're going to use tape on your comic bags, uh, do yourself a favor. And uh, if anybody ever gets your comics, do them a favor and switch over to uh, masking tape. It holds just as well as um, regular tape from a tape roll that you just, just tape. But it doesn't, it's not a much of a pain to get off if it sits there for a while. Alright, with that said, let me stick that in there. And let's see what we got. We have a Dark Crisis number one. 
which is the variant cover by Greg Capullo, Jonathan Clapton, and Dave McCade. Okay, we got a Best of a Archie Comics. Best Archie Comic Ever, number one. Scout Comic, number one. Puck Artist and the Myth of Color. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar with that. Never heard of it. Alright, I'm guessing that's DC since it's highlighting Shazam. And it is Black Adam number 7. Variant cover by Taj Tenfolo. And then the one that was on the front was The Flash with Grant Gustus Gustafson. I should know his name by now, uh, Grant Gustafson. Um, so actually, I do like that one because I really enjoyed the first several seasons of The Flash. All right, that was box number one, quite the adventure. Let me put everything right back in here. So that was the all ages box. Now, do you think, okay, so you tell me, do you think that box was definitely worth the money? Hey, I'm happy with it. I think that was, I think this is kind of actually really cool that it's not just comics, but collection related, even though this is the funniest thing to get in there. Um, I mean, if it didn't say protonics on there and it just had like the Cheshire cat sleeping on the moon, that would be pretty cool <laughs> by itself. But the fact that it's a protonics mug just cracks me up. All right, so let's set that to the side. And by side, I mean over there. And let's get into the all ages box. All right, I'm gonna do this one a little bit different instead of digging around this box. Let's see if I can just safely pick everything up out of it and set that box right over there. Okay, that's a little bit better for my sanity. All right, again, flyer. Again, flyer. Again, a whole stack of cards. So, and just in case you guys are wondering, I am going to um, go through these cards and look them up on a couple online databases and see if they're actually worth anything. Um, I do have some older Magic the Gathering cards. I did sell a couple of the higher-end ones a couple years ago. Um, but everything else I have now is just kind of boring, generic stuff. Okay, so we've determined these are UGO. Three UGO, four UGO, five UGO, baseball, 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 baseball. I'll go through those again in a second. Baseball, baseball, um, magic, 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 baseball, magic. Oh, okay, that's a magic the gathering. I don't know what that means. Um, you folks that are playing Magic, it says you can use this card to represent a double-faced card. Magic. Magic, Magic. Nope, you do. Magic. Alright, so let's check our cards. One. Two. Three. Uh, try not to cover anything important up four five six seven eight nine so there's nine magic the gathering cards let's see what this huge UG UGO one two 
three, four, five. This down here says first edition. Are UGO first edition cards worth anything, folks? Let me know. Six. All right. Um, there's our baseball. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so I don't follow any sports teams. Um, you know, I have a passing understanding of baseball, and I didn't hear, I've never heard of any of those players. So, uh, but again, we'll look through everything and compare. All right, so what do we have here? Oh, we have a trade paperback uh, graphic novel, Marvel Astonishing X Men Unstoppable. All right, no sense in unwrapping it. That's all it is. All right, uh, the same. Five assorted, number zero or number one, variants enhanced, signed comics, $25 value. Uh, there's a Miracle Man number one. Isn't there, like, he come into a movie or something? Well, let's figure it out. This is the... Miracle but Neil Gaiman. This is the new Miracle Man, not the old Miracle Man. This is from 2022. Uh, number one, The Harrower by Boom. Issue one, Sumerian, The Purple Oblivion. Printed in Canada. Anybody heard of it? Uh, one in five. So I'm guessing this is an independent press. I will look through it later. Terror War. Image number one. And Marvel. Um. Destiny of X, Bishop War College, number one. And then I guess this is why it was the rated R for Low Rider Magazine. Um, this is from February 95. I'm not going to flip through there because it's rated R. And we'll flip through there later off camera. All right, gentlemen, ladies, comic collectors. That was our two mystery boxes. Uh, actually, the All Ages was more excited than the um, than the rated R. So, let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Since this video has ran on a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and publish the first half. I might publish the first half. Uh, let's see how long it um, takes me to get the second half in. So... We'll see. As always, thanks for watching and good comic hunting while you're out there. Have a good day.